Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. A little over a month ago, Gearbest sent me an Aladdin Box Skycube 3D printer to review. I made a video about it, and that seemed to go over fairly well, so if you're interested in checking that video out, you can click here. But a few weeks ago, they got in touch with me again to ask if I would be interested in reviewing a dual extruder 3D printer, and I've never owned one, so I said that would be great. It showed up a little bit over a week ago, and with work and holidays, I just got around to building it over the weekend. The printer they sent me is the Zonestar P802QR2, which really doesn't roll off the tongue so easily, so I'll probably just refer to it as the Zonestar. This video specifically will be less of a review and more of an overview of the build and first impressions of this printer in general. I'll be printing some much needed upgrades for the printer and trying out some more dual color prints in the next week or so, then I'll make an actual review of the printer overall. First of all, the printer comes as a kit that you will need to assemble. It has a full sheet metal frame, six stepper motors, a heated bed, two Bowden style extruders, two hottens combined into one X carriage, a 12 volt power supply, Repetier firmware, an included auto bed leveling sensor, an acrylic spool holder, a 512 megabyte SD card, and the usual tools that you would expect to come with a 3D printer kit. The SD card comes with the source code for the installed firmware, which is pretty awesome, and it has a few sample G-code files with their respective STL files, as well as instructions on how to assemble the printer. The PDF assembly instructions that come on the SD card aren't very helpful, but they do provide some QR code links to YouTube videos that seem to show the full assembly in greater detail. I didn't bother to look into the videos when I was building it, so I pretty much just used a system of educated guesswork and reading through the instructions until I got it built. If you're planning on building this printer, I recommend getting a QR code scanner for your phone so you can watch the videos. Also, I forgot to install the auto bed leveling sensor before I wrapped the X carriage wires, so I'll need to go back and do that at some point. But since the sensor is optional, it probably won't hurt for me to test with manual bed leveling as well in the meantime. On the topic of how well the parts go together, I'd say the parts were mostly easy to assemble and intuitive. However, both extruders came with springs that were far too short, so I had to install some washers and grab some spare springs that I had laying around to replace them with. At the worst, this is a $5 trip to a hardware store, but still kind of annoying. My second complaint on this printer is more of a design flaw, and believe me, it's a very big design flaw. The printer comes with an on-off switch that will allow you to turn the printer on and off after you've plugged in your power cord. That switch is designed to lock into a slot on the side of the printer directly underneath where the mains voltage wires are connected to the power supply. There is a hinge plastic cover that locks in place over all of the power supply connections, so as long as you install the wiring correctly, you're probably mostly safe from touching bare wires and electrocuting yourself with 120 volts or 230 volts if you live outside the US. But that's amazingly not the biggest problem with this design. If you look at where the wires and connectors come off of the back of the switch and flip around to connect back to the power supply, you'll notice that these connectors are resting up against the bottom of one of the metal support beams with a small clear plastic boot as insulation in between. These kinds of boots are generally pretty easy to slip on and off of the connectors that they cover, and the wires themselves were easy enough for me to strip with my fingernails. Not only that, but the printer itself is made entirely of bare metal, which is a disaster waiting to happen. This can be easily resolved by printing off a power supply cover that will cover the bottom of the power supply and house the wiring of the switch to move the wires away from the bare metal of the frame. That way it would make it much less likely that you'll touch any exposed main voltages. If you already own a 3D printer, I would recommend printing the power supply cover before even attempting to use this printer. But if this is your only 3D printer, just be very, very careful when you're wiring it up to make sure you don't electrocute yourself or start an electrical fire. And probably don't leave the printer unattended for any excessive amount of time. There are most likely already some power supply covers on Thingiverse that will work for this particular setup. I'll look around to see if I can find any, or if I can't, I'll design one before I put up the review video. Safety concerns aside, I have printed one dual color print so far and I'm actually pretty impressed with how it turned out. I slapped together a Simplify 3D profile really quick and I haven't had any chance to fine tune it so there was a good bit of stringing and color bleed, but the results were surprisingly great. The SD card comes with a video explaining how to set up Cura or Repetier Host to slice specifically for the printer, 
but I did attempt to print one of the sample G-code files, and the first layer was way too far from the bed, even with the nozzle less than a paper's width away from the bed, so it failed two minutes in and I haven't tried again. Anyway, this printer is currently $230 on Gearbest, and it comes with both dual extrusion and auto bed leveling out of the box. It will definitely require some work, so I would only recommend this printer if you're okay with putting in a little bit of work to make it safe. If any of you are interested in picking up this printer, I'll add a Gearbest affiliate link in the description below, or if you dislike me or my channel and you want to pick one up anyway, feel free to go directly to their site and search for the Zone Star P802QR2 and you should be able to find it. The price should be the same for you either way. Anyway, feel free to click the like or subscribe button if this video was at all helpful to you, and keep an eye out as I should be putting the actual review for this printer up on my channel soon. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.